Hello and welcome to another edition, in fact I would say a fabulous edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And today on the show uh, we're going to be uh, taking a new product from the marketplace which sort of has defined a new category of computing type device and compare it with some other others. And specifically I'm talking about the MacBook Air. Yes. So this is, Ma this is Apple's line of ultra thin laptop, mm -hmm. right? And, but we thought, well, if you're going to be buying this, you might actually be looking at, for example, a tablet. Yes. Or maybe even a netbook. Yes. Right? Two other things that have uh, recently been defined as their own categories, yeah. despite the fact that they're, they're not really all that new either. So. No, it's fair enough. I mean, the netbook's been around for a couple of years now, the mm -hmm. tablet, you know, a year or so. Yeah, and even the ultra compact, like the MacBook Air, has been around for a few years. But these, these new things that we have here are the ones that sort of refresh the category and actually made them feel brand new and actually useful for the I first time. I heard you time. say the ultra compact. Ultra compact. Ultra compact. Ultra subcompact. Sub subcompact, yeah. Is yeah. it premium netbook? Premium we'll, notebook, netbook, something. It, there's a lot of terms. We'll get into it yeah. because it's, it's a bit of a funny space. So that's what we're going to do today on Lyra. So we're going to look at the, the new MacBook Air and how it compares to the tablet and the netbook category and help you decide which one, you know, perhaps you're going to buy. So that's today on Lab Rats. Welcome back to Lab Rats. Uh, before we get started, of course, I want to talk a bit about our sponsor, Hover.com. Um, yes, sir. Great uh, place to buy domains and do more with them. Mm -hmm. um, and I suppose you could visit Hover.com on your netbook or your tablet or your MacBook Air. You can, in fact. <laughs> All right, well, so Hover is a, a domain reseller. They, they sell you know, web addresses to you. You can get vanity emails. They have great customer service. If you ever want to talk to them and figure a problem out, you call them and they pick up the phone. Yes, it's it, good. It is good. The people that put you on hold for like six trillion hours. Right, and you don't have to talk to somebody in a foreign country. Well, you have to talk to somebody in Canada because our call center is here in Canada, but you know. That's a, part, it's a feature, not a bug, as it were. I guess. All right. So to get you started, we're going to zip on over to uh, this address here on the screen. Uh, give you 10% off as soon as you use that URL to help you buy a domain and get your email and do more with them. That's hover.com. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, let's get on with the show, my friend. So, mm -hmm. um, so very interesting. I mean, so when the MacBook Air from Apple came out, probably was a couple of years ago now, I guess. Yeah, the first generation of it. Yeah, a couple of years back. Like Apple was working hard, I guess, defining the sub note, the super sub notebook genre, right? Thin, right. not as fast as perhaps a fully fledged notebook, but gave you the full kind of desktop experience. Yeah, so it, uh, they were fighting very hard against the whole netbook tag back at that point because netbooks were just starting to come into, into the world and they were tiny uh, little things, not as fully featured, but the MacBook Air was originally launched into the world as uh, sort of an antidote against that. It's a full featured device, but smaller and more but compact. Small. Right. Now let's talk about, so let's define a netbook because I think most people out there will know, but we don't want to make those assumptions uh, necessarily. So let's, mm -hmm. so what is a netbook? Right, well, we uh, have a netbook over here. So as you can see, it's not quite a notebook. It's uh, a lot smaller here. Um, the goal with the, uh, the netbook is to have most of what you need in a uh, notebook with limited hardware specs. So you don't have the best processor. You don't have as much screen space. The keyboard is a bit smaller. Um, everything is sort of reduced. And uh, if you're not going to be out there rendering video, it's perfectly fine. So it's aimed for things that you do on the net, so like email, uh, the web, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Anything that's very net-centric. So no, like, no super uh, video games on this thing, no. no video editing, no maybe a limited picture editing, that sort of thing. Right. right. So just basic office work and internet activities. Yeah, and maybe you can watch a few videos or something on that, but you're not going to be playing anything, any video games that are high-end, right. that require high heavy-duty rendering. Now, netbooks were kind of really did well because, of course, the pricing was very, very low. Yes, was, they were you know, 7,000 and certainly sub-500 in many cases. Yeah, so they, when they first started, 500 was the thing they were hitting. Uh, they are getting to there by really scaling back the hardware, eliminating the optical drive, and putting a, you know, their own personalized versions of Linux on there so they didn't have to pay for Windows on top of that. Now, a lot of them do come with Windows as well, of course. Um, now you're seeing them $250 even in some cases. So it's really, really affordable to get a netbook. Okay. So that's the netbook category, and we're also going to compare it to the tablet category now. I, iPad was the, the product that came out in 2000, early 2010, mm -hmm. so earlier this year, um, and really has sort of taken the world by storm. In fact, many pundits are saying, you know, the tablet is really going to take over and kill the netbook category. Yeah. Hasn't happened yet. No. Hasn't happened yet, but it does really sort of feel like uh, touching the future here. It's like touch sensitive, 
generally speaking. Now, this, we should mention that the tablet, this form factor, is really nothing new because we did have these things out a number of years back with windows on it. So full-size notebooks, sometimes with keyboards that folded in on the back, but sometimes they're just in this form factor, just a screen, and we called those slates. Mm -hmm. And you interacted with a pen and you know, used the pen or the stylus on the screen itself. In this case, we're just uh, looking at uh, you know, touch functionality, so we have the ability to you know, move around just with our fingers and uh, with this button here, so we can flip around on the screen, just zoom, pinch, all of that sort of stuff, all with your fingertips. So ultra mobile, definitely sort of the functionality of a netbook, so there's not a lot of video editing, although there is video editing products for yeah. it, but really it is comparable to, it's basically it's like a netbook without the keyboard. Pretty much, and with touch functionality with touch on the screen. Functionality. Right, okay, good. So those are the, the two categories, certainly unto themselves uh, would be a reasonable choice if you want to be mobile, you want to be connected, and you want functionality, most functionality of a computer. Right. So along comes Apple and mm -hmm. says, okay, we're not going to do a netbook per se, no. but we're going to do this thing called the, the MacBook Air. Mm -hmm. And so tell me how that differs from these two guys. All right, well, as you can tell from, uh, from this one right here versus the tablet, it has a keyboard. It yep. actually folds open and it looks like an actual notebook, right? Yes. So this is the, the full meal deal. If you compare it to the netbook, bring this out over here, just, just take a look at the, the difference in the, the keyboard here. Yeah. The keyboard on the, the MacBook Air is actually full size. This one right here on the, uh, on the netbook, it's yeah. a little bit small. Your fingers have to squinch in a little bit, and you can really hurt yourself typing on this for an extended period of time. Right. So the, there's no compromise on the actual keyboard part of this. This is an 11-inch MacBook Air. This is the smaller of the two, and it's still a full-size keyboard, like you would see on the full MacBook. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have uh, an optical drive in it, same as the netbook. Um, it does have a full-size screen, so the resolution in this is actually very good. It's uh, about uh, what you'd find on a full-size MacBook, mm -hmm. or better in some cases. Mm -hmm. LED backlight, so it's a really brilliant-looking display. Mm -hmm. uh, has a processor on board that is the full Again, the full meal deal. It's got a Core 2 processor from Intel. These ones often use a, a more scaled back version called the Atom, yep. which is okay when it's plugged in, but that's not generally how you're going to use it. You're going to be using it on the go. And in that sort of case, you actually want a little bit more power because the Atom scales way back when it's not plugged in. I'll just pull in here for a second. I just want to show you if you're going to go shopping for a netbook, you'll see this logo here. I don't know if you can. There, there the Intel go. Atom. That's the indicator that it has that low powered. Uh, you know, uh, efficient uh, processor that's, that usually defines the netbook category. Yeah. So it's, that's the, the key word there is efficient. It's, it's designed for efficiency, which means that when you're using it in the field, it'll scale back on its performance, so it's not going to crank out CPU cycles any more than it absolutely has to, right. because that way it can stay running for a lot longer. And now what's the processor on the uh, MacBook Air? This one, again, is a Core 2. Uh, it's the sort of thing that you would find. Uh, slightly lower frequency clock speed, so mm -hmm. you don't really need a high-end clock uh, on, on this, but it is the full core too, so you do get a lot of power out of it. So if you need the power, it's there. Um, again, you're probably not gonna be editing video on this thing. You don't really have the inputs or the outputs to do that, but it is able to do a whole lot more. Good, so okay, so it's an upscaled version of perhaps a netbook with an upscale price as well. Yes, or a downscaled version of a uh, notebook with maybe a similar price, but it is a lot more portable. Right, right, okay. So let's go through them, uh, I guess left to right, so we, uh, where we talk about pros and cons, so people right. can really get a sense of what they're losing out or gaining based on each particular category. <clears throat> yes. So let's start with the netbook. So pros for the netbook. The pros is it has pretty much everything you need to live on the net. So you can do web, you can do, uh, you can do your email, all of that other stuff. It's got the keyboard everywhere you go. It's got a, generally a pretty good screen, although it's a bit small. And uh, it often comes bundled with things like webcam. It has a full hard drive, has removable batteries often. So it is literally a scaled back notebook with yeah. a lot less power. And wireless connectivity, of course. Wireless connectivity yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay, good. The downside, of course, on yeah. that one is the screen isn't great, right. generally. Uh, and it has, suffers from a lot of the same things that notebooks do in terms of power. It runs out of batteries. It has a spinning hard drive in it often. Right. Um, so a battery it doesn't have long battery life necessarily? Not necessarily. The Atom certainly does help uh, yeah. maintain the, the battery life, but it still has moving parts inside in, in most cases. Okay. And the thing that really kills this thing if, from a productivity perspective, if you're thinking of using this as a writing machine, writing a whole lot of emails, 
the keyboard is really small. Right. Typically, you it's you good need for small hands. Right. So the the keyboard, the key pitch is a lot smaller. So like eighty percent often of what you'll see on a full size notebook. Got it. Now, uh, okay. So those are the the and what about the cons in terms of price? Well, a pro like ring. The, the pro is a uh, price is a pro. It's generally about five hundred or less these days. You can get some really fancy dancy ones that are a bit more expensive, but that's sort of the rarity these days. You're not going to see them up around a thousand dollars. Okay, got, got it. Any other downsides? Um, you can break them. You can break. Them. Yeah, you can but, break all of them. Actually, you know what I like about these these guys, and I, I often think about this when parents say to me, "You know what? My my kid wants a laptop, mm -hmm. so we'll get him a netbook." You know, yeah. Price wise, under five hundred dollars. If they if they drop it, lose it, whatever. It's not like it's a sunk cost of a thousand or fifteen hundred bucks or two thousand dollars. Right. Right. Um, they're relatively sturdy, and uh, and small keyboard, small hands. Yeah, they're they're sized for for smaller right. people as well. Almost yeah, like a kitty computer. It is like a kitty computer. Yeah. Good. Okay. Moving on to the tablet. Then. Let's talk about the tablet. What are the pros in the tablet? Well, the pros are it really feels like touching the future, as I said. Using the, the fingers on the screen and just really interacting with it really feels nice. It, uh, it's the sort of thing that once you play with this for a while, you go back to a notebook and you start tapping the notebook and you want to interact with the screen that way. It just feels so primitive yeah. not using your fingers and interacting with it. That I way. was watching my uh, three-year-old nephew the other day and uh, he has his own iPad mm -hmm. or he's basically stolen my brother's iPad. Mm -hmm. And so he sits and he plays his games. So I was, uh, he was watching Adora the Explorer, mm -hmm. right? And uh, you know, he, he's very proficient at touching what he needs to do and making the, the videos play. So then we, we took him downstairs to the big screen Sony television mm -hmm. and we fired up Netflix on there and there's a play button and he walked up to the screen and he pushed the, the play button, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, which didn't work. But, and he was a bit puzzled by that. But yeah. it just goes to show you that that, that intuitive experience really is starting to create an expectation. It is. You know, yes. That's just amazing. Yeah. So the other nice thing about this form factor right here is it, it's really natural to hold something in your hand like this and interact with it like this. Um, you do want to be able to to touch things and read it like this. It's like holding a clipboard and walking around with the clipboard. Right. Not, not something you would type on you know, in, this, in this form factor, or like in this orientation, but for consuming your media, say you're reading a book or consuming a web page, it's very natural to hold it like this and, uh, and interact with it with one hand free and the other hand holding it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's nice. The downside, you notice I pulled this out of this stand. Yeah. You need something to hold it up. Otherwise, yeah. it's going to be not necessarily an optimal experience. Right. So um, you can get yourself a stand. And you probably will want to get yourself a keyboard if you want to do any real work. So a Bluetooth keyboard for connecting to it. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be sitting there typing on the, uh, the on-screen keyboard and getting up to speed on that. It's possible, but you've got to be really good. So you have to buy accessories to really turn it into kind of a, a functional data yeah. input device. Right. Or you've got to either learn the, the on-screen keyboard quickly or just put up with the fact that you're just not going to put much data into it. Right. It's, it's a really great multimedia device. It's a great gaming device, um, great for reading text. You know, not necessarily for a long, long time because the screen is backlit, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a great for all of those things. For actually typing extended periods, not really. And so. a really good media player, I think. A really good media player. Mm -hmm. And one of the other downsides of this is it can be a bit pricey. Right. So we're talking about five hundred to a thousand dollars in that range. This one starts at uh, four ninety nine for the for the iPad. Goes up to eight hundred and some if you're getting the one with Wi-Fi and three G built in. Mm -hmm. um, of course, there's uh, other kinds of tablets. There's the Android tablets. Samsung has the Tab out. Um, so Galaxy Tab. Galaxy Tab. Yeah. So there's there's different types of it. Again, same sort of thing. Some of them will add extra functionality. This one right here doesn't have USB connectivity on it at all. Yeah. Some of the other ones that are coming out will, but right. they're also going to be a bit thicker and clunkier and uglier. So. And I think you know it's worth mentioning that you know come 2011 when we go to the Consumer Electronics Show in January, mm -hmm. you know you're going to see a whole new generation of, ta of tablets. I think everybody and his brother is going to be making uh, some flavor of tablet. So this is, I mean, iPad certainly defined the category, mm -hmm. but I think you're going to see lots of this type of device with a variety of different features and choices uh, coming out on the marketplace in 2011. Yes. Yeah. Good. All, All right. right. So let's uh, shift on over to the MacBook Air now, which is again is sort of a, is a kind of a. Car there's no real category. Maybe it's in its own category. Maybe we call them premium netbooks. I don't know. But mm -hmm. so, so what the pros? I think we've already kind of covered a couple of them. Mm -hmm. It almost has the power of a, of a notebook computer. Yes. You know, so you could do some video editing on it if you know if you want light duty video editing. You could do some photo editing for sure. Definitely you can play some games. I would imagine. Yeah, definitely uh, plays games. Yeah, but uh, but again, in terms of battery life. Battery life, this is actually not bad. They uh, rate it, uh, this particular one, at about five hours of battery life, and that's actually using it rather than optimal. We're not doing anything, we're just letting it run down with the, the brightness set to zero. 
Um, this is actually in real use. They're getting about five hours out of it, and some people are reporting getting up to eight hours out of this thing. So, so relative to a network, then better battery life? Generally better battery life, because yeah. again, there, there's no moving parts in this one. They've actually dispensed with the hard drive, and they're going just straight with flash memory for the, uh, the storage on this one. It's got a fuller keyboard, full it's got size a full keyboard. keyboard. So it's a very, very functional device for actually right. typing and uh, doing your email. You don't even have to stop to think about it. It's just keys are all there right where you want them to be. No pain in your wrists from that. Does it have like the instant on capability of the iPad? Yes. Right. Turn it off. Turn off. And there you go. Back on. Got it. And you're already ready to go again. It doesn't take too long for this. So really, it's, it's almost like one, one of these guys, like an iPad, but with a keyboard. So it, like an iPad with ways. a keyboard. And, and the other thing it adds, but of more course. More powerful, I suppose. More powerful, and it adds USB ports on the, uh, the sides here as right. well. So you actually have a little bit more input output than you do on the iPad. Uh, got a display output there, uh, the display ports. So it really is a, a work machine. Right. But the, so what about the cons? Cons, it's pretty pricey, really. It's $9.99 to start on this particular model. It goes up to $1,600 and some for the one with uh, 256 gigabytes of flash memory and right. uh, enough, uh, enough uh, RAM on board. Right. So it, it can be very pricey. Um, um, that's the only con I can really think of. What about, is that upgradable? Can you like, uh, put up more memory in it? Can uh, you... uh, th yeah, th there's, a, there's a con. So it, you can see there's, there's not really anything on the bottom here for, for uh, installing extra stuff on here. So yeah. you can take the, uh, all of these screws off and open it up, but it, you can't replace the battery very easily. Um, the flash memory is bolted right on now, so you can't just uh, add extra or replace it's the drive. By it, it's not so expandable. Yeah. I'm sure that if you had an engineering degree, you could do it fairly, yeah. fairly easily. Not consumer expandable. It's not stuff. consumer friendly, okay. so and it only has very limited ports. So it's got the two USB, so no firewire. So video editing not necessarily such a great idea because you may want a firewire drive to make that really worthwhile. And it's a very limited amount of uh, space on board in the uh, the memory. If you go for the lower end version, 64 gigs. That's not a lot. That's true. Okay, good. All right, thanks. Well, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll have final thoughts on uh, our uh, uh, the various gadgets and whether we would buy them or not. Um, and, of course, uh, Clip of the Week and Picture Time as well. That's after this. Welcome back to Lab Rats. So, uh, Sean, let's uh, kind of go through each one of these kind of categories and, uh, you know, just talk about final thoughts in, in terms mm -hmm. of each kind of device. So netbooks, I guess this is sort of the choice for, was it low, the low-cost alternative like that? Yes, so it's, it's the most cost-effective choice, I think. If you just need something to go around with you everywhere you go and you don't really care about you know, how good the keyboard is or how high-powered it is, it has everything you need to do your day-to-day -day web stuff. And it's, it's fairly compact and it's fairly cheap as well. Right. So it, it's a very good, very good price alternative right. to all this other stuff. And the one thing we should mention here, one of the reasons it gets that cheap uh, on that end anyways is because it doesn't have some of the hardware and the most common thing which we didn't talk about right. earlier because yeah. I'm, I'm not even thinking about it anymore I just sort of take it for granted that it's not on there yeah. but it's not necessarily that way for everybody that's watching it doesn't have an optical drive so if you wanted to play a DVD on this or install some software from a CD or DVD right. doesn't got it you have to get an external uh, choice yeah, for you plug in the USB port but it's not built on and board natively right and that's true of this as well as the MacBook Air the MacBook Air doesn't have it well, as well and I guess yeah or the, the iPad. The, so. the tablet doesn't have one as well. Yeah, the MacBook Air gives you the choice of using something called Remote Disk, which allows you to install uh, your software from another computer that's on your network, yeah. um, if you really want to do that. But I guess we're moving to a download model for a lot of these things. We're just downloading straight to them rather than installing from CDs. So the big downside, for the most part, is movies. People aren't going to be able to play their movies on these things. I got it. OK, good. Unless they download them. The tablet. Tablet is... It's your futuristic choice, really. Yeah, this I is the way things are going to go. Yeah, so. it really is. So then this is something portable, don't need a lot of input, um, you know, a multi-faceted gaming machine, media, media player, and that sort of thing. Right, and uh, I said it, it, as you said, with, uh, with your relatives wanting to touch the big screen TV, it's, it's really a paradigm shift. People want to interact with touch yeah, nowadays. Uh, people are asking, why isn't there touch on the MacBook Air? Well, interacting with it you know, at arm's length like this, not really all that comfortable over a prolonged period of time, which is why they chose not to do that. They built all that into the touchpad. But for something that you're going to hold, it, it's really great. You can actually hold it while you're sitting in bed, reading, that sort of thing, which you're not necessarily going to do with something that has a keyboard it's on it. It's kind of a good casual computer. It's a good casual yeah. computer with a lot of uh, tactile fun. Yeah, tactile fun. Okay, good. And then uh, MacBook Air, maybe we call this the premium netbook. 
this is the premium uh, choice. Yeah, it's the most powerful of these. It has the most going for it in terms of a, a productivity machine. So if you really do need to do a lot of writing or interacting via email, you like having a big screen, this is the way to go. This has everything you need. All the power. All the power. Most of the power, I suppose. Mo most of the power and most of the hardware features. Again, it doesn't have the optical drive, as we mentioned, but uh, you may not need it. I got it. There you go. There you go. So, so that's the, that's the wrap-up for our, uh, all the new categories, I guess, of devices that you may want to use for your computing needs. Okay, good. So mm -hmm. let's... Um, why don't we go and ha have a look at a clip? I know you did a, uh, we have a new series on butterscotch.com mm -hmm. called the How Do I series, mm -hmm. which uh, you're doing many of these episodes. I am. And you did a series on the MacBook Air. Yes, I took a greater uh, look at all of these, how to use it, how to uh, use some of the functions, and how to install software on it since it doesn't have the CD drive. So, right. um, yeah, I did a five part series. Five part series. Okay, yeah. well, let's take a quick look at a clip of that, and when we come back, picture time. Welcome on deck. I'm Matt Harris. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman. Welcome to the A list. Hi, welcome to Miss Download. This is what we use to reinstall the operating system. So you take your USB recovery key and you put it into one of the available USB slots you have on your MacBook Air. The Apple logo will go up, you put it in and push it into place. Now when you insert the USB key, this little window will pop up with the install Mac OS X option. So if you want to see the entire uh, series of the How Do I series, How Do I Use My MacBook Air? How Do I Use My MacBook Air? Uh, zip on over to butterscotch.com uh, and you'll find that in the tutorial tab. Um, check that out and um, learn exactly how to use your MacBook Air. You may not even have a MacBook Air yet, but it'll show you kind of the experience of how to use it and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, a great visual reference. Yeah, if you're worried about uh, whether or not it's for you, it'll give you an idea of how, how you interact with it. So. Very good. Terrific. Okay, thank you. All right, now onto my favorite part of the show, picture time or video time, or what do we have this week? We got pictures today. Pictures. So we, we complained a number of weeks back, and uh, you followed through. But keep, yeah. keep them coming. We want yeah. more pictures all the time. Yeah, so yeah. Um, so we got a couple today. Uh -huh. First of all, we got from uh, Lance and Kathy in our Redwood City, California. Their cat, Bear. Laser and eyes, Bear. Laser eyes, Bear. So we should have some lasers shooting out of that. Pew, pew. <laughs> but Bear is uh, rolling over and just awesome just watched our episode on build your own pc Clearly. so so this is what uh, bear what awesome. bear feels like after a good episode and <laughs> building bear's own pc i don't know if bear's a girl or a boy so there well, you go we look carefully ah can't see fur's in the way all Rubber. right who else, who else we got? <laughs> all right so we also have one from our friend john who's in australia and uh right. john got a butterscotch t-shirt a while back so he's uh, actually wearing it in this and uh showing off uh a little bit of handiwork here. So you see on the top of this uh, little computer here, uh -huh. there's a power supply. It's uh -huh. an external power supply because the one inside doesn't work. So he uh, jury-rigged it with it up. another wow. one. So. And how old is John? Uh, young Under enough, that's pretty impressive. Under 25. <laughs> yes. Good stuff. Good stuff, John. That's great. Yeah. All right. Well, if you'd like to have your pictures uh, shown off on uh, Lab Rats, you can email them to hardware your, hardwire your power supply into a cat with laser eyes <laughs> at labrats.tv. <laughs> And uh, I don't know if you've got tired fingers, you want to type something shorter. Or maybe you have a netbook like this and you actually can't type. With you get finger cramps. So you get finger you want, cramps. Want something shorter, you can email it to? Feedback at labrats.tv. Oh, there you go. All right. Well, awesome. Thank you for a great episode this week. Thank you, Terry. Very nice. Um, I think my mom would really like one of these. I showed her my MacBook Pro and she's like, mm. too big, too big. Too, too big. big. What else you got, she says. So. Here's a netbook. Too small. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching this week. Thanks for pushing play. You know, it'd be foolish for us to be here with our MacBook Airs and our netbooks and our tablets if you weren't out there going, I'm so tired of carting around my desktop computer in my little red wagon. My name's Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Are you ready? So we'll come back, you can mention the optical drives, we'll jump to the clip of the week, then we'll go to picture time, then we'll extra. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So final thoughts at the end? No, at the beginning. Beginning? Okay.